Announced all the way back at E3 2018, Damon X Machina has finally received a playable demo via the Nintendo eShop, and it shows a lot of promise, so I thought we'd take a look at it today. But what is this game exactly? Well, at its core, this is a Nintendo-published, mech-based action game for Switch, powered by Unreal Engine 4, and developed by First Studio, a subsidiary of Marvelous. Kenichiro Tsukura, who previously worked on the PS2 era of Armored Core games, takes on a producer role for Damon X Machina, and it's clear straight away that From Software's classic mech series serves as a source of inspiration here. It's a beautiful game with a lot of potential. It's fast-paced with some great animation work and effects, but when it comes to technical performance, well, this pre-release demo certainly raises some concerns. So what is the state of Damon X Machina then? Let's jump in and find out. With its bright, borderline garish color scheme, Damon X Machina certainly has a look all its own. The game presents open-ended maps featuring a mix of buildings, dusty terrain, and a bold selection of colors. While constrained by a mission barrier surrounding the mission area, the maps themselves feel suitably open and ripe for combat both in the air and on the ground. The gorgeous blue sky in early missions contrasts against the dusty desert to great effect, while barriers feature this stifling effect reminiscent of printed color manga. Vast structures are bathed in deep shadow, while a subtle ground fog lends extra atmosphere to the world. It's fair to say that visually, the first impression is strong, but look a little closer and image quality leaves a lot to be desired. You see, the rendering resolution, while very reasonable for Switch, lacks any sort of anti-aliasing or image treatment whatsoever, resulting in a highly aliased presentation with a lot of shimmering. So what is the resolution then? Well, when you're playing in docked mode, Damon X Machina targets Full HD 1080p, but this drops regularly, spending most of its time closer to 1664 by 936 or so. When playing in portable mode then, the resolution drops to 896 by 504, but we notice dips as low as 408p. Now presumably, as we saw with docked, it can reach the full native 720p of the Switch's screen, but I did not encounter this during any of my testing, and when played on the Switch itself, the image quality is often rather poor. So again, while the results aren't bad in terms of actual numbers, it's the lack of anti-aliasing that really detracts from overall image quality, leading to a rather pixelated looking game. This is one key area I'd like to see improved with the final product. Now even though image quality is rather poor, most of the rest of the presentation looks really nice. The mechs themselves are huge and detailed, with excellent texturing. Individual parts move to adjust to the terrain, likely using inverse kinematics, which basically means that the legs adjust properly to terrain such as slopes. Moving through the world appears fluid and natural as a result of this. Some of the larger foes are even more impressive to behold. So here's this giant enemy robot crab. To defeat it, you need to attack its weak point for massive damage. Honestly, battles such as this recall some of the last generation Armored Core titles, such as 4Answer. With a range of independent moving parts, it really is a sight to behold. The effects work is also top notch, with a wide selection of beautifully drawn explosions, smoke trails, laser blasts, and the like. Simple shapes and colors are combined with appropriate textures to create the intended effect, and it looks great. Though really, I might argue that some of the effects work is so good that it almost conflicts with the slightly more realistic looking visuals. Then there's the world itself, and this is where the game falls a tad short. While the overall design of the world and the structures and the color usage are all excellent, there's a lot of limitations such as relatively low resolution textures and tons of shimmering that detract from the overall presentation. It is neat to see how destructible parts of the city can be, however. Another point of interest, the shadow map rendering. In keeping with its unique visual style, shadow maps are filtered in such a way to appear almost blob-like. This reduces the need for high-res shadow maps while reducing typical shadow map cascade issues where shadows appear more pixelated at a distance or at oblique angles. There is a noticeable cutoff point in which shadows are no longer drawn, but the shadows themselves look relatively clean. 
this style of rendering does not necessarily work with a super realistic style of design, but it's very effective in this game. Another nice touch is light bounce. Using Unreal 4's global illumination features, sunlight bounces realistically off surfaces. Notice how the color of the sand is reflected in the armor of your mech here in the desert, for instance. So visually then, the game looks similar in both handheld and docked mode, but there are predictable drops in quality. Texture clarity is reduced as a result of the lower resolution, while things like vegetation appear chunkier. Depth of field also appears shallower at lower resolutions, while texture filtering is reduced. Basically, it's all the differences you would expect to find between docked and portable mode. Really, overall, the visual makeup is borderline excellent, but subpar image quality and some other strange choices do detract slightly from the presentation. And honestly, none of this would be a huge issue if the performance held up. So let's rewind a moment here. A couple weeks back, you might remember that I took a look at Yoshi's Crafted World on Nintendo Switch, praising it for its use of Unreal Engine on the Switch. The resolution is even lower than Daemon X Machina on average, but it more than makes up for this with excellent visual design and a silky smooth 60 frames per second frame rate. By now, I think it should be rather evident that Daemon X Machina does not target 60 frames per second, but unfortunately, things are a lot worse than it might first seem. Basically, in its current state, the game runs very poorly. Now, Let's be completely fair here before we get into this. This is a pre-release demo, and the developers have plenty of time to optimize. However, as they were looking for feedback, I think it's important to discuss the performance here in its current state, as there are two issues to discuss. Firstly, there's frame persistence or frame pacing. Now, we've discussed this many times before, but to reiterate, this refers to the length of time a frame persists on screen. At 30 frames per second, each frame should appear for exactly 33 milliseconds before a new frame is drawn. When performed properly, this creates the illusion of smooth, consistent movement, even when your frame rate is a tad lower, such as at 30 FPS. Unfortunately, Daemon X Machina fails this test spectacularly. This is without a doubt the single worst example of bad frame pacing I think I've seen in years. It's so wildly unstable to the point that it appears as if the game cannot run fluid even when it's hitting its target. So I'm holding out hope that by the time the final game is released, this problem can be sorted as I don't think it's too late. Then again, there is that From Software connection here with the game's producer, so who could say? I'll cross my fingers and just hope for the best here. This is only a small portion of the problem, however. The main issue here is that the average frame rate is abysmal. As a game published by Nintendo, though not developed of course, I would hope that these issues can be sorted by release, but basically, the game targets 30 frames per second, but in nearly every single battle, it slips well below this point. Sometimes it hangs in the mid-20s, but in more severe instances it can drop to around 20 frames per second and often lower, and usually for an extended period of time. Basically, the frame rate is so low at points that it genuinely impacts gameplay. Flying around through the sky while attempting to target enemies at 20 frames per second just doesn't feel great. Sure, the game does rely heavily on auto-aim, so it's not necessarily unplayable, but it definitely does not feel satisfying due to the very low frame rate. So what about portable mode then? Well, with its massive cut to resolution, I feel that the average level of performance might be ever so slightly higher. But honestly, the performance is still very poor across the board. Bad frame pacing with serious performance dips. I mean, you can see that this mission here actually comes close to holding the 30 FPS target, though the frame pacing is terrible, but later when a boss appears, it dips down to the very low 20s. So again, it's really the same problem. So basically, this is a game that really does still need a lot of work before release, but this late in development, I do kind of worry whether or not it may be possible to eliminate these issues. Would a more dynamic resolution help? Well, if it's CPU related, perhaps not, but either way, we'll certainly give it a second look when the game is finished. At least the loading times are rather quick. They're not super short, I suppose, but it's never distracting, and that's a positive in its favor. And really, the overall look and feel of the game has a lot of potential. I love the visual style, I love the controls, and the concept. 
It does feel like a more anime inspired take on Armored Core, and I really think this could work. On the flip side, the performance is just terrible and image quality is poor, both of which detract from the experience. The only other critique that I'd like to mention here centers on the user interface and HUD. Essentially, during gameplay, the HUD feels remarkably intrusive on your gameplay space, which, combined with the low FOV, leads to a less than optimal play experience. Couple that with enemies that are sometimes difficult to differentiate at a distance, at least before the targeting box kicks in, and, well, I still feel that there's some improvements to be made here. I will, however, say that the soundtrack has grown on me. After expressing disappointment in my last Twitch video covering Yoshi's Crafted World, Damon X Machina offers something much more fitting to its action, I think. Featuring composers that worked on games such as Soul Calibur, Tekken, and Ace Combat, it's a mix of heavy metal with sort of an orchestral vibe, and I think it works pretty well. It's just that the default volume is rather low for the music. But really, that's basically where we're at overall. The game has a lot of potential, but still needs a lot of work as well. When the final game hits, I'll be sure to check back and see if the development team has managed to pull it off. But until then, that's going to be it for me for the moment. If you enjoyed this little video, be sure to let us know by liking, subscribing, ringing the notification bell, and following us over on Twitter. And until next time, this is John signing off.